오늘 우리 사회는 갈등하고 있습니다. Korean society is under conflict to opposing camps in a standoff in the streets. Well, we haven't witnessed such a situation in Korea in quite some time. Today, I would like to touch upon four points regarding the current social conflict we are experiencing in Korea. Why did the conflicts become so severe? Is this assumption even true? If so, why does it feel like conflicts have gotten more severe? And faced with such a situation, what should we be wary of and what should we be pursuing? There are two reasons behind this situation. First is democratic development in Korea. As freedom of expression of ideology and conscience grows, it is only natural that diverse opinions are voiced out at once. And this is bound to increase the possibility of differing opinions creating conflict. Secondly, for like-minded people, the technological platforms for them to easily communicate and gather have developed. If the Internet was responsible for all connecting people, then mobile technology has made people always connected. These always connected people are being mobilized faster and stronger than ever before. Under such conditions, the democratic nations of the 21st century are accustomed to such conflicts and confrontations between groups of different views. Let's look at a theory that explains such a social conflict. James Hunter argues that the social conflicts in the U.S. have nothing to do with objective elements like class, race or religion. Researchers focusing on far-right politics in the 21st century Western society view current developments such as British farmers supporting Brexit and lower-income white Trump supporters in the U.S. in the same light. That is, regardless of individuals' economic and social conditions, they are showing strong political preferences. Political scientists refer to this as post-materialism. This doesn't mean moving away from pursuit of material values to the pursuit of spiritual values. It means that regardless of realistic gains, individuals are pursuing a specific ideology. Examples in Korea would be that of the Gangnam left or the low-income class rightists. This shows the research result of people who pressed like on Facebook pages of five presidential candidates in 2017 and which Facebook pages these people were related to. Through network analysis, we found these Facebook pages can be categorized into three groups. The blue shows mostly progressive political figures and groups, while red represents conservative figures and groups. But what's interesting here is the yellow. Yellow represents Facebook pages of entertainment-related contents. We can note here is that online ideological conflicts are in line with entertainment area highlighted in yellow. So people who actively express their political opinions online are also actively voicing their opinions on entertainment issues which gives way to the theory that these conflicts are not based on an objective understanding of politics, but rather based on fandoms of particular political figures. This is much like fans of Tucson and LG baseball teams who don't have much conflict in social interest, but they simply oppose each other because of the uh, teams that they are rooting for. So is it right to try to assess the Korean population's average political mindset just by looking at online conflicts and confrontations? To answer this, I'd like to turn to offline research results. Let's say there is social conflict regarding a particular issue, then people's opinions will be divided into these two peaks. But if people's opinions are gathering to a particular side, then we will see a rise towards one side, one peak. However, we should remember that under a democratic system, whether it be a two-peak or a single peak, the opinion should be widely spread and diverse. Through face-to-face -face interviews, sociologists have researched whether the Korean population is moving to bipolarization or gathering towards the middle. Since 2003, for the last 16 years, I have conducted analysis on the data of the comprehensive survey of Korean society. As a barometer of political ideological conflicts in Korean society, we looked into people's positions on North Korea and their political dispositions. Because I believe this is the core issue for the conflicts we are seeing online and in the streets. 
This graph or this diagram shows the analysis on how you view North Korea, friendly or hostile. It's clear that the majority of opinions are centered in the middle, a single peak, meaning that the average position of Koreans are more moderate, in the middle, rather than radically opposed. Of course, relatively higher levels were visible for hardline positions from the conservatives versus softline positions from the progressives. But throughout the survey period, the tendency to concentrate in the middle became more and more visible, which means that there was never real extreme bipolarization of opinions regarding North Korea. Regardless of administration in power, for the last 16 years, Korean society's average political position has been moving more and more towards progressive tendencies. Also, centering in the middle, this single peak structure has been maintained. Let's look a little deeper into specific issues. The Moon administration's economic policies, specifically policies on minimum wage and regular workforce uh, contracts for the political sector, were at the center of controversy recently. If you look at online or TV debates only, you might feel that people's opinions are very much separated into extremes. But as you can see, people's opinions on these policies actually are very distributed and centered on the middle. Even within the conservative LKP and the uh, Minju Party supporters, we aren't seeing as much of a confrontation of two peaks, but rather a difference of two concentration areas created for each group's moderate center. So in reality, our society's confrontation is far less than it feels like. If so, why do we feel this way? Well, one explanation could be the characteristics of online confrontations. What you see on the left is the visualization of networks between political blogs during the 2004 U.S. presidential elections. Rada Amadik found that there was a clear bipolarization of blogs, Democrats or Republicans. On the right is the analysis we conducted at our KAIST lab of Twitter activities during the 2012 Korean presidential elections. As in the case of the U.S., depending on whether you support Park geun or criticize her, the Twitter account seemed bipolarized. So this kind of phenomenon is quite natural in the online world. The reason is that online users have a tendency not to express their own opinions, but rather first read the opinions of the other side and their own side and then express an opinion that is favorable for their own camp. What is primarily important online is the recognition or the acknowledgement from my side or my friend. First and foremost, getting an agreement is important and such social recognition, recognition comes from my side, my friend. And the clearer the content, the higher the possibility of receiving such acknowledgement. This is the reason behind the visible bipolarization on the Internet. The second reason is the division of values each of us pursues. The horizontal axis shows how people evaluate the fairness in our society, while the vertical axis represents putting priority on individual freedom or collective rule. What is noticeable here is that the conservative, the conservative position rather, of demanding the guarantee of individual freedom under the premise that the society is always fair, and the progressive position that demands strengthening of collective rule to guarantee social fairness under the premise that our society is basically unfair. These two trends are visible, and these opposing positions seem to represent the conflict groups that gathered recently in Gwangamun and Seochodong regarding the Minister of Justice appointment. However, I do not believe that those demonstrations took place because of conflicts between conservatives and progressives. If we take a note of the composition, actually 85% of Koreans, meaning a vast majority, believe that our society is unfair. These people who hold the U.S. flag and the Korean flag in hand, who seem to be supporters of individual freedom and capitalistic order, take up only 9%. Those who point out our society's lack of fairness, that is 85% of the population, is the same percentage of Koreans who were outraged at the influence peddling scandal of 2016 that led to the impeachment of President Park. It is also a similar figure to the percentage of the population who applauded the current administration pledge for equality, fairness and social justice early in its term. 
Forty-two percent of people who agree to the values of justice and fairness are the, of the opinion that as long as you don't break the law and pursue your personal interest in a legal manner, it is not a problem, while 43 percent believe, even if it isn't illegal, passing on wealth to your children or tolerating actions linked to influencing your children's ability to enter a good university is unacceptable. The political elite who have direct interest in the appointment or the failure of Justice Minister, I believe that they wanted to avoid that essential issue. And the most effective way of doing so is to avoid the real reason and substitute it with the age-old conflict between conservatives and progressives, simply amplifying the effect. If that is the case, under such distorted environments, how would we be able to fundamentally resolve the conflict and how can we, the political arena and society as a whole, accept and be receptive of the will of the Korean people? There are two decision-making processes that we as individuals conduct independently. One is the opinion poll and the other is voting. If we, as a nation, make important decisions by vote, as we do now, then a general opinion poll would be much more accurate in predicting the future compared to online polls. Because in offline opinion polls, people will make decisions independently, regardless of other people's opinions, just like they do when they are voting. As I already presented to you, if you look at the poll results from the last 16 years, the moderate groups have remained firm and they have even become more consolidated than before. Therefore, what we should be focusing on in order to predict our future and make important decisions isn't the bipolarized division and conflict we're bound to see in the online world, but the focus should be on the centrists who will have the final decision-making power politically and socially. Voting is crucial in a democratic republic. Voting is a means to resolve superficial conflicts. The political elite who are positioned at both extremes are well aware of this. And as voting time draws near, the more reasonable ones will move themselves to the middle rather than trying to convert the moderates to the extremes. Adam Smith argues that the fairness in market transactions are made possible not due to the conscience of transacting parties, but because of a third-party fair observer. In the same context, the centrists of public opinion must act as the general will of the population and take on the role of serious observer. And to make sure that their agenda can be attained through the representative system of the government, we must focus our efforts. And for these serious observers to function properly, we must lo not lose faith, faith in the Democratic Republic's representative system. I present before you two cases. For Thomas Hobbes, though, conflict was not essential. For Hobbes, conflict was no more than a logical mechanism to prove the inevitability of representative government. On the other hand, Carl Schmitt, conflict was absolute and couldn't be resolved through a representative system, so the only solution was to obliterate the others, the enemy. And during the years he served as the crown ju jurist of the Third Reich, this belief led to the tragedy of Nazi Germany. Germany. The first article of our Constitution defines the Republic of Korea as a democratic republic. This means that all authority emanates from the people, and civil servants operate the government on behalf of the people. The people's democratic commitments are to be reflected by vote. The general will of the people, based on the firm and strong centre, should be reflected through this system of representative or parliamentary system, and as democracy matures, its functions and importance become strengthened. As we witness more conflicts in our streets and on our screens, we should look to those centrists, the serious observers, to find the direction forward. This is how we will abide by the principles of a democratic republic, and this is how we can escape from the superficial and habitual rut of social conflict. Thank you.